Okay guys, I'm back. Now, I've been back for a little bit. I've been filming some of the um, yard cleanup. I wanted to wait until we got some of the shade lines over to our new project. It sometimes doesn't work out so well in the sun. So, um, although we see this in the sun, you might not see the end result until this evening, um, just because of the way the light plays with the camera. But we've got quite a bit here. Um, right off the bat, we've got a frozen margarita pasta. Now, I'm super excited about all this product. Um, and I went larger than I normally do. Well, no, I always go large when I get stuff because I'm kind of an instantaneous type person. I don't want to see it develop down the road. So I've got some bigger stuff. And in a few years, um, I can divide these, add the beauty to the rest of the yard. But for today, this is the product I'm going with. Um, now I did buy a little extra and I've, I'm going to use it in other parts of the project um, in the yard. Um, but right now, this is what I'm going to do. So, what did I say? We got the frozen margarita. We've got the Patriot Hosta. This is really nice. And this one over here is a guacamole hosta. Gets really big, so this is going to be fun to plant. Um, I've got this in a couple other spots. I don't, I don't know that I have a favorite hosta. Kind of like them all, you know. Um, in fact, I've got, remember in my other videos I talk about it? I got the uh, curly fries pasta. These get stay pretty small, and I'll go over that here in a little bit. But I got three of those, so those are those are fun, little unique. Isn't that fun? How they are all just so different. Anyways, for us plant geeks, that's that's what uh, that's what kind of is fun about the whole process. I ended up getting my black mondo grass. This stuff's super expensive, um, cause I think cause it's slow growing. Somebody else could tell me that, but it's it's pricey. Um, but I got several of these. Won't be doing that anywhere else in the garden, I don't think, for the foreseeable future. Only because of the price, and I've never grown it. It says it's good for zone six through whatever, and, and uh, so this is, I'm zone 6A, and I've not seen this grown around here, um, but I don't know a lot of people that um, garden. My uh, my friends list don't do, <laughs> don't do a bunch of gardening, and, um, so I haven't seen this at any of the arboretums. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this anywhere. No, no place that I've seen in Kansas. So I'm taking a chance. Um, I can get 50% of my money back if it doesn't work out. But it does say it's good for zone six. It gets down to negative 10, uh, or it can it can uh, survive to negative 10. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. But isn't it so showy? Um, I think it's going to be really great when. Um, when I put this all together, but if you can see that there, isn't that fun? Now see, I have uh, Lyrope in here, the monkey grass, and I have to cut it back to the ground um, every spring. It takes a while to come out of it, and again, back to my instantaneous um, gratification, <laughs> it takes a while, and I might, I don't know that I so much like the monkey grass in some of the parts I put it in the garden. It does really good by the pond, but there are a few areas that I'm just like, uh, I don't know. So hopefully this doesn't play that same role, but I have a feeling it's going to. It's going to be in a small pocket, probably right up against the um, moon gate. So wish me luck. Um, went with some hookra. These are fun. These are uh, Southern Comfort hookras. I think they're going to be great. Um, I, I don't think it looks so good against this, but I'm going to have it separated and we'll, we'll figure it out. But look at this. This plays out well together, so um, the design. I got it in my head, but it's hard to explain. So uh, let's see here. We got a Forever Red, so these are fun as well. I think these can complement all this stuff here. Um, these look so good together. Uh, one of these may not end up in this pile, but I'm showing you anyways because when I edit this out, I want to make sure and give you guys all my options. So we'll see how this plays out, but this is super showy with, with uh, all the hostas. So this one, not so much, but we'll see how it works out. Anyway, I'm kind of that guy that jumps into a, a, a nursery and I'm loading up the cart and then I go, like, oh, I gotta, I gotta check the budget. I gotta, I gotta see where I'm at. So this hit pretty well. Um, Back there, those red bags, that's topsoil. Um, Scott's topsoil, it's an amendment that I use. Everybody uses something different. I've used that for the entire garden. 
everything, everything I've used in this garden, because I do have clay soil, I do amend that with every single thing, and it's 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 a higher ratio than normal. So um, all these beds that are lifted all through here, I'll, that topsoil, that Scott's topsoil, I I amended it in everything. So and it grows super fast. Everything that I've put in, so I've had very good success with that. So we'll see. And then the rock, I just grabbed the rock from another part of the garden that I'm tearing out. So. When it's all said and done, hopefully it'll turn out and it'll be great. Great, we'll see. Um, but I'm gonna hold off for just a little bit longer because the sun and the area we're in, I want it to look good. So um, probably gonna get back to some cleaning and then we'll, uh, we'll get back to this here in a little bit. So planes are flying above. We'll check you guys here in a little bit. Let's get started.
back but I am in day two of this project yesterday evening when I was just about to finish up and recap with you folks um, a neighbor came over and asked me to for some landscaping advice what an honor I I took the rest of the evening and we went clear into dark talking about stuff so wasn't his niche but it's uh it, it's super it's it's so satisfying being able to help folks um, in whatever they're asking for. So that was a lot of fun. I turned that into a about a four hour session. But uh, so here we are the next evening. Um, and right away, I just want to share with you folks the progress. So as you've seen in the video, there's a lot of cleanup. I'm so happy to be done with that sidewalk. That sidewalk turned out really nice, but man, it was a pain cleaning up after it. Um, Apologize for the background noise. First of all, the uh, neighbors are mowing, so it's fun, I guess. Uh, the neighborhood is waking up. But let's start off right here with what we got planned. Um, now I still have to mulch. I pick one day and I do all the mulching and you know, I have to pull it in and off a trailer. And so I just go through and I make one day where I just uh, do the whole yard. Um, so we'll get, we'll get that uh, backfilled and it'll look really sharp. Uh, but let's just start off of here with the uh, black Mondo grass, the stuff I really wanted. Um, it's super pricey. At this size, it's really pricey. But uh, I think it's because it takes a long time. I didn't ask anyone, but, you know, common sense, I think, tells us that it's not a fast grower, so it takes a while. But uh, I think it plays well with these rocks here. Um, this is probably the only place it'll be in the garden. I am super worried that it's gonna end up like the monkey grass where I have to cut it back and then wait till like late um, spring for it to really start to show here in 6A. However, it is super showy. I really like it. I think it's gonna play well with uh, the moon gate here and the juniper and some of the other stuff that's gonna be happening right here. So um, yeah, super excited. And when the uh, wind blows, just a slight breeze like now it does uh, have that movement, so that's fun. Um, right next to it was not planned. So real quick, back there where I tore out the gazebo, right under that tree, I have a lot of shade plants that are gonna have to get rehomed because now the evening sun sits on that spot right there. And I have to do it fairly quick because a lot of those uh, plants have had dark um, evening shade, like really dark, and so uh, probably darker than they would like so this is going to be an eye-opener for them um, but right here I, I, I moved some uh, Brunner that I did not think I was going to be adding to this spot but after I did the video for a little bit and I got to looking at it I was like you know what this needs something else so I filled it up with this and if you can see here oh, aren't those precious I think it's great so I believe this is Jack Frost I'll have to look at my notes and if it's not, um, I'll put it under the screen, which you will be reading at this time. But I believe that's Jack Frost. Uh, right down here, playing along with that log is Southern Comfort Hookra. That is a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. You can see just what size those leaves are with just my hand. So they uh, may not have come across as very much, but uh, super exciting to just add some different colors in the the garden so that one's a lot of fun i don't typically other than um planting maybe boxwoods i don't normally plant in rows i like to uh offset but uh i think i think i'm gonna keep it i'm i'm not 100 percent sure but uh i think i'm gonna keep it and then right beside it was another one of those jack frost um that i brought over brunera and added it to this section so that I don't have just a singular one here. I don't really like to plant in doubles. I like to do um, kind of threes, fives, sevens, but uh, today that's how that's going to work out. And then as those leaves mature and that as that plant matures, it's going to fill in that space um, really well. So that's exciting. And then you can see here, I have Forever Red Hookra, a little bit smaller leaf, but uh, still that red plays in there so well this one might get lost in the shuffle on the video when I pull back but it really it really does pop and I think it'll play well until these hostas start to grow those hostas will get way bigger um, and so will the uh, junipers but it's gonna take a while so right now um, 
for the sake of starting off spring, maybe the next next couple years. It's gonna play nice real, real well right there. If they're super excited about their area, they'll really pop off and it'll be quicker than I think. But uh, for right now, oh, can you hear that bumblebee kind of playing around the camera? Um, but I think right now that's, uh, you know, just to kind of fill in some of those dark spots over here by Mr. Frog. I don't even, that wasn't even part of the plan. Sometimes you just pick up stuff at random garage sales or uh, junk stores and you know somehow some way they find a way into the garden so just tucked him underneath there it's a little I like to add little things down low for children so when children visit the garden or when I have grandbabies and stuff I know it's still a long ways off but when I have little kids and um, you know I want to get them inspired about gardening too and and so I like to tuck in little things down at their level so they can see and it gives them, oh, mom, look, there's a there's a frog. So that's kind of fun. Um, but again, not typical of me to plant stuff in a row. You can see here with that planted in a row. This is kind of planted in a row, but I think it plays really well right there. Now, I'm not a big edge guy. Like um, some people like to just, you know, cut straight down in the ground and then mulch from the grass. My grass is very vigorous. And so... Uh, what I do is I'll, I'll end up putting a little metal edge around there that I, and it'll just be a slight Slight hint of it from here, but that way I could weed eat a, uh, around it and uh, So if it, you know when it looks like that grass and that are too close together when I weed eat now it, It's gonna play out. Well, um, if I could get under there and show you without um, Making the camera go wonky I would but uh, you can kind of get the idea. There's gonna be a metal um, edging there so, uh, and that, remember the, the log that I put in, um, in earlier in the video, that was just a log that sat, pan you around here. So you remember when I moved into this yard and I've told you the story, no fencing, nothing. There was one Bradford pear here, uh, about right there. And a Bradford pear behind me. Um, and ultimately when I started doing this garden, I ended up taking those out. I'm not a big remover of trees guy. I, I like to just, um, uh, maybe see how I can repurpose it or move a tree, move something, but it was at a height that um, I probably uh, would have needed a large, large truck to come in and do. And it just didn't fit the style for what I eventually got to. So that tree came out and um, that stump ended up, I'll just pan you back around here, that, that tree trunk um, ended up sitting in the back of the garden for a long time, started to dry out, whatnot. So, uh, when I was thinking, um, hey, how can I hold these rocks up? What? And that's why a lot of times I, when I do a project, I'll kind of do a small part of the project. I'll sleep on it a couple nights and don't rush into it. Let it come to me. And so this is kind of how this turned out. I thought, you know, hold that soil back. If you can see here, let me get you down here. So up here is soil from the, the log back. So that's all built up there. And then from down here, so the soil is the length, uh, the height of the, the uh, log there. So it's gonna hold it back and act like a wall of some kind. So instead of adding all the rock, 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 it's going to, uh, uh, that's gonna kinda soften this edge here and not just be, you know, a redundant uh, row of rocks that I've have set throughout the garden all the way around. So, you know, it comes to it comes to me it comes to you as a gardener you figure out a way how to make things work but uh i thought it turned out nicely it just saws all that in there and and now all, everything will blend in so this hosta here now this is funny i can't pronounce it i've tried asking google how to pronounce it i've tried looking it up on youtube and uh, i cannot find it anywhere so i will spell it out for you here it is on the screen but uh it's funny, the funny part about this is when I asked the nursery, uh, one of the top dog nurseries that I like, the one that I've seen, showed you in my other video, they couldn't pronounce it either. So the gentleman that they thought would be able to pronounce it wasn't there at the time. So yeah, um, good luck with that because there's no way of me saying, hey, how do you pronounce this? Because we can't speak to each other. So uh, that is so showy. I love that blue in there. And you couple that with the... Uh, decaying stump here or tree trunk you know i just think it's great i think it's going to play well in that 
that spot and eventually as it gets bigger it's going to grow over it'll fill in those um, spots that uh, one day I'll mulch and then one day we're going to wake up and we won't even be able to see the mulch there so I really love that moving right along this is a patriot hosta super showy I think this is really cool because I got a lot of browns here I've got a brown uh, trunk there I've got a brown rock brown bridge and then I've got this wonky little um, tree piece here looks like it was a piece of driftwood honestly it's it's like the frog over here I just I pick up stuff that I think could potentially find a spot and be a speaking point to the garden and um, here it is here's today's it's 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 time to shine so that stump that bridge that river or that that stone right there and that piece of driftwood all has its own little story here now together so I think that's fun um, and then right back here nonetheless we have frozen margarita so that's pretty cool I and it really brightens it up again I I do know that as summer continues the uh, Sun will set further back at this point which I'll have just a little bit um, I do have a uh, Japanese maple here that is going to leaf out but it's going to take a while and then so all these trees and stuff are going to have to work together to kind of give it enough shade so we'll see i may have to uh well i will monitor it for some time to make sure that it don't end up um it don't end up uh in the sun in the evening sun too much because we know how that works um, some hostas can do well in that i don't know for this particular one so that's a lot of fun that was a day between cleanup shopping and getting this put in this actually didn't take so long i think the rock project took the longest and i just wanted to share it with you because if you're along for this backyard journey of mine i think it's important sometimes to um see the lay of the the yard and see how everything works out and then um you know you can appreciate all the work that goes into to uh <laughs> setting up a garden so um hopefully i've inspired some of you hopefully uh maybe motivated a few of you and hopefully i haven't bored the rest of you so that being said, I hope you guys really like this project and how it turned out. We've got many more coming. Um, this is the only really bright spot in the garden as everything else is just waking up. Uh, but I think I'm going to be kind of clear of temperatures because normally April 28th or somewhere there is our last frost free day. Is that how you say it? Last frost free day. And so we'll see how it turns out. Um, I do have stuff that I'll wrap this with, but I have a lot of other hostas that are coming up in the garden. So I think we'll be fine. I'll monitor the weather for the next 10 days. We don't have any chance. I think we have a 39 one day. So um, I'll monitor that. It's about a week away. Um, but 10 day forecast is about as happy as this garden is right now. So um, I just appreciate everybody watching. And if you, if you like what you're seeing here on this channel, go ahead and um, hit a like and and we'll see you on the next one. I am, I'm super excited for where we're headed. So y'all take care and we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye now.